I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of 1 John, chapter 5, so let's focus on verses 18 through 21. We know that everyone who has been born of God does not sin, but the one who is born of God keeps him, and the evil one does not touch him. We know that we are of God, and the whole world is under the sway of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding so that we may know the true one. And we are in the true one, that is, in his Son, the Messiah, Jesus. He is the true God and eternal life. Little children, guard yourselves from idols. 1 John 5, verses 18-21 through You know, the biblical ideas of sinning are not as clear-cut as one might think. Now, obviously, the followers of the Messiah, Christians, we sin. Otherwise, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 12, Jesus would not have needed to teach his disciples to pray in this way, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Of course, Christians sin. A Christian is not sinless, but if we're growing in the Lord, should we not be sinning less? Now, remember earlier in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, that the apostle exhorted in such a way. He said, My little children, I'm writing you these things so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, the Messiah, Jesus, the righteous one. So what does John mean when he says everyone born of God does not sin? Well, he's referring to the Jewish concept of sinning willfully. Now, more than simply sinning on purpose, right? I meant to do that. I'm sinning of my own free will. Sinning willfully in the Jewish mindset means to willfully approach the Lord without an atoning sacrifice. Now, check out 1 John 2, verse 2. He himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for those of the world. 1 John 2, verse 2. Now, we talked already about this when we went through 1 John chapter 2. We talked about what a propitiation is, and what is that, by the way? A propitiation means the full payment for our sin. So even though we sin, we always have an atoning sacrifice So when it comes to approaching the Lord, the follower of Jesus never sins willfully. Although there are times when a Christian says, hey, you know what, I want to do this and I know the Lord doesn't like that. But just know this, that you never approach the Lord willfully because you always have an atoning sacrifice for your sin. This is not to be used to be a license to sin. So let's just go sin whatever we want because we have a free pass. No, if you truly have repented from your sin and surrendered to the gospel, while you may not be sinless, surely if you're seeking the Lord and His Word, you should be sinning less and less. The whole point, though, is this. You never appear before the Lord without atonement. And although we may sin of our own free will, uh, you never approach the Lord like I say, without having your sins atoned for. And that's how John can exhort the believers in Jesus. Those people like ourselves who sin and yet later make the statement that believers do not sin. And hopefully that clears up some of the confusion. Of course we sin because we stand before the Lord boldly because our sin has been atoned for. Now we have hope. And this is also part of why John is going to such great lengths to make sure that people know that a true believer would never abuse God's grace long term. Rather, true believers live to obey the Lord's commands out of thankfulness for having their sin atoned for. You know, finally, John ends this letter by alluding to the Trinity of God. He uses the Hebrew understanding that God is one from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 and 5, in order to describe the Messiah as God the Father, the one who has given us understanding, which is the ministry of the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus sends to all believers the moment that they believe. And any other concept of God is a lie of the evil one, and thus it is idolatry. Yes, theologies, which are not according to the word of the Lord, those can also become idols because they keep us in trusting something that the Lord never promised. We have to stay away from any teaching 
which denies or adds to these attributes of God. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Check us out at groundworksministries.com. Groundworks Ministries.